I will tell you these past 30 days were like Jesus please don't make me and welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video my name is Lori if you are new here I am a family nurse practitioner and today we are going to talk surviving your first 30 days in a urgent care setting if this is the first time to my channel I recently started working in a urgent care setting and I have officially did 30 days because I even got a 30 day review from the bosses. For reference, I've been a nurse practitioner for three years. Well, three years, yeah. I graduated in 2017, but I did the boards in 2018 and passed. So three full years I practiced as a nurse practitioner in the nursing home setting, in the hospital setting, and also did wound care. One job, but I did those three things. Now, urgent care is definitely, definitely a different ball game. Like, I don't think anybody can really explain urgent care to you and tell you how you're going to feel doing it unless you do it. 30 days in and your girl is like, I don't know about this. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I feel like it's just like a boom, there's a shock to my system. The amount of patients that come into a urgent care setting is quite a lot some days. Urgent care is like a walk-in clinic. So you don't know how many people is gonna walk in one day. It could be 100 walk-in, it could be 20 walk-in the next day. Um, the most patients I've seen so far by myself is 70 patients. When I say that out loud, I'm like, oh my God, what are you doing for 70 patients? For me, surviving these first 30 days, one of the things that I did was I really made sure I had a go-to resource. I have a friend who now has been in urgent care space for like six or seven years. And in these past 30 days, <laughs> he has heard from me so much like we've been friends for over 10 years but um i i joked and said to him oh i owe you and your wife lunch because your wife is like Lori, keep texting my husband but i know them try to get some resource that you can bounce back ideas from even if you don't know anyone that work in that urgent care space try to form relationships i know it's hard trust me i know being a new person sucks i've said that multiple times on my channel but having a resource somebody in your back pocket that you can be like hey this is what i'm seeing what do you think this is what i'm gonna do type of situation because in a urgent care setting you are most of the time the sole provider in the clinic however um your urgent care should have some someone that you can reach out to two things that i um bought or one was gifted one i bought to help me survive these 30 days and i'm going to show you guys in a minute but as nurse practitioners we not all of us i'm not going to say we like everyone but some of us did not get a lot of introduction and practice to like suturing incision and drainage things like that a lot of ortho stuff come to the urgent care and you kind of have to be versed on these things so you if you are going into the space some of the things you're gonna have to try to teach yourself or try to pay for a class i'm not comfortable with my suturing let me go pay for a suturing class or something speaking of suturing first thing that i think you should get if you want to try to practice suturing i think it's a great tool and it helped me a lot and it is this kit this kit is a suture practice kit my friend actually bought this for me and gifted it to me uh so yeah very very useful and helpful there is also video guide that is included in this. I'm going to link this down below. Got it off of Amazon. The inside actually came with, so it came with this and it shows you like different laceration types. Um, so, and it's like silicone. It's not like a hundred percent like your skin, but I find that it was pretty, pretty good. Even when I was in the clinic and I was doing suturing, I actually have sutured four times now in my 30 days. I might give you guys a story time on one of those lacerations, but we'll see. So yeah, um, this is what, you know, this is like silicone. The other thing that it comes with in the packet is this little case and you get all of these in here. So you get your needle driver, you get your scissors, and you get all of the needles and the suturing 
things that you need to do suture i honestly think that this is a, a good thing to start from of course research youtube there's so many videos of surgeon and different people on youtube the next thing that truly helped me survive these 30 days is this little guy this is the EMRA antibiotic guide. This is the 19th edition. This also has an app. So if you don't want this little book, get an app. Once again, friends that I have that work in urgent care setting, they did advise me, yeah, just pick up this. Because for me, coming from like primary care, not even much primary care, because I wasn't really in the office like that, only in the beginning part of my other job, but mostly nursing home and inpatient, I was not seeing kids. So I had to get acclimated to that, get acclimated to what I'm treating, what's the dose for the kid and different things like that, right? Uh, I also have to get acclimated to certain um, diseases that I am going to see in urgent care, like STD. STD is such a big thing in the urgent care setting. Those are kind of the three biggest things that I did to kind of survive these 30 days. And I think that will sort of kind of help you when it comes on to ortho stuff. Uh, I'm still trying to learn all my ortho stuff because I of course yeah, there's so many fractures and x-rays is a big thing in the urgent care space and for me I uh, have a advantage because I send my x-rays to radiology I have been getting in the habit though of looking on the x-ray so I look at the x-ray myself and then you know, I'll say, I think this is something. I don't think this is anything. I think this looks fine or whatever. Because I want to practice and see if I am picking up things. And then, of course, when the radiologist sent it back, I'm like, okay, I missed that. Or, yeah, you were right on that. So that's what I just do to challenge myself. Because how else are you going to learn? I will tell you guys that I think in one of my videos two years ago, year and a half ago, when I first started YouTube, I was talking about a lot of apps that I was using as a nurse practitioner. And one of those apps was that, let me see, it is called Sublock. Of course, up to date, we know up to date is expensive. I got it previously from the affiliation with the hospital I had, and now I have it for with this job, so that's pretty nice. Of course, up to date is very wordy, and sometimes you'll be like, listen now, get get to the point, up to date, get to the point. That you have to kind of weed out certain things. What the other one name? Hippocrates, Hippocrates, I want to say it. Hippocrates, <laughs> I think. Uh, I think the last time I said hypocrites, and people were like, say what now? Whatever. Hippocrates. I'll put it on the screen. That also is one of the apps that I am continuing to use in the urgent care setting. Another big one that I'm using right now in the urgent care setting is CDC because of this whole Rona. I have to kind of keep up to date to tell patients, oh, well, CDC is recommended that you quarantine for this amount of time. Or, you know, folks will come in and say, I tested positive for COVID, but I want to travel. I need you to write a letter for me saying that I'm not contagious. And I kind of want to be up to date on these things. So I had the CDC app. But I really wasn't using it that much in my previous job. But now I'm fine. I'm I'm looking at it because I want to make sure I'm up to date with those things. So that's kind of what I have been doing to survive these first 30 days. I'm not gonna lie, this is a lot. If you guys have been watching my vlogs, some of you guys really think that I am complaining a lot, right? And it's not that I am really showing you what a lot of people are not showing you when it comes on to working in certain settings and what it it truly looks like how many people are really saying well there was a hundred patient in this urgent care today and I was the only provider like a lot of people are not disclosing that you know of course there's a lot of good teaching videos about urgent care let's have the conversation as well about the workload because we should have these conversations about workload because this is kind of what it looks like you don't know what your workload is going to be every single day because it's an urgent care. It's not like primary care where you're scheduled 20 patients, you're scheduled 15 patients, and you're like, I'm going to see 20 patients today unless somebody um, canceled. So that being said, I kind of want to show all of it. I want to talk about the workload. I want to give you guys great tips to survive. And I just want to talk about all of that because all of it is important. And I may complain because if I want to complain, I will have people to complain too. I'm sorry, I'm Jamaican. I will translate. If I want to complain, I got a husband, I got a sister. Listen, I can complain to them. I'm just 
telling you guys the reality of it now a lot of you guys reach out to me and you're like are you gonna stay what's going on i don't know if i'm gonna stay and that is the honest truth um i don't know if i'm going to stay i might stay i might not stay i will tell you these past 30 days were like Jesus, please don't let me make a mistake. Please don't let me do this. Please don't let me do that. Especially when it came on to the pediatric patients. I was very nervous. I'm still kind of nervous with it, but I'm getting way more comfortable with these with the pediatric population my than my first day. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the three main things that I did to survive. When it comes on to the charting, a lot of you guys, oh, I need to talk about the charting a little bit. You guys know I left the, the wound care stuff behind and I left the nursing home stuff behind. And if you've watched me for a long time, you know I used to sometimes see 40, 50 patients for wound care. I would be at home trying to do all these progress notes and I hated that. And I am still doing it because I still haven't found my sweet spot with my notes. And I think... Um, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to be the provider that say, I don't want people to wait really, really long. So I'm kind of like seeing patients, seeing patients, seeing patients, and they have my nose backed up. Moving forward for the next 30 days, I'm definitely not going to do that. I am going to pace myself, see chart, close the chart, because at the end, I am left open with way too many notes because I'm like, I don't want somebody to wait too long. But at the end of the day, then I am going to feel stressed out. I am going to feel burnt out, and I just don't want to do that. So moving forward with my notes, I'm definitely going to just see no more than four chart and then close out the notes and move on because like i said i was coming home with a lot of notes somebody in one of my comments mentioned to make pre-template notes i've done all of that because i did that when i was a um, nurse practitioner in a nursing home setting and doing wound care so i do know how to kind of make pre-templates or if you're doing epic do the dot phrase like I'm, I'm 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 doing that trust me i'm doing that yeah that's it i will save all my other rantings <laughs> for another video because you guys probably hear all my rants in my vlogs because that's where i'm like da, 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 da. this is what i don't like and blah, blah 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 so watch all the urgent care vlogs that you will learn other things but that is it if you are a new nurse practitioner or a seasoned nurse practitioner you've not worked urgent care um these are the big three the the biggest things that i will tell you guys and if you've never been in this space be prepared to be shocked by the volume of patients the speed of it all like i'm one of those people that i'm not slow but when i tell you some days i'm like i feel so incompetent what is going on <laughs> you know don't feel that way don't beat yourself up y'all already saw in my vlogs but i was i was just beating myself up so much about girl pick it up pick it up pick it up and now at the end of the 30 days i'm like lori give yourself grace you did amazing it is what it is people are just going to have to understand that sometimes there's a wait because oh, let me, before I end this, you know, when somebody is having a real crisis, because people come into the urgent care for real emergencies and you're kind of dealing with that and stabilize them. And then people out here screaming and yelling that they've been waited 30 minutes when you're dealing with a crisis and they're really here because they need a Z pack for a sinus infection, a sinus infection that they said the symptoms started two days ago and they need a Z pack and they're bitching and complaining outside. Ma'am what at this point i'm just like you're just gonna have to wait your turn and that is how it is because at the end of the day i am going to give myself grace and i am going to make sure that i'm not overwhelmed or stressed out because i mean i'm you're human i'm human nobody wants to be overworked and stressed out or any of that so that is my tip for you guys let me know in the comments if you have done urgent care what are the tips would you give and i will catch you guys up on uh the next video of course don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel and like the video because i appreciate it see you guys